So, there have been some slight changes to this tank. Very, very slight. There are now checkerboard barbs. There, there's one of them. Right there, they were just little tiny guys. There's another one. And I also got some super red bristle nose. You can see one in the reflection right there. Got some real nice color on them. Got two of them. They're in there somewhere. Alright, I'll show you the other fish I got. Alright, and I got some ape giant pleco. A L089. My information was wrong. They do not get 8 inches. He is full grown. They're only supposed to get like 4.7 inches, but this dude's massive and he's awesome. Picked him up for a great price. And he's a very cool pleco. I haven't really seen them before. I love his fins super long oh, yep he's in here chilling with the cichlids and I picked up this bow front I believe it's like a 20 gallon from the dimensions it's pretty dang tall but yeah picked up two bow fronts haven't found a place for the other one but this seems like a good spot Yeah, starting to get a lot of tanks built up here. Alright, and in here are the Variatus platies. They're in there somewhere in the green water. It's a murky, soupy, pea soup tank. Gotta get a UV sterilizer, because I'm tired of this green water, but I just haven't gotten around to getting one yet. But yeah. Pretty sure if I step back, they might pop up. They're very little, but they are super brightly colored, and there's seven of them, I counted, so that was cool. And I picked them up for a steal. I mean, every, when you get stuff at the clubs, the, the prices are just amazing compared to what you can get at the fish store or online. And there we did have a talk about leopard frog plecos. I'll put a little bit in there at the end maybe. It's about five minutes worth of footage I have for an hour and a half long talk. So definitely didn't get all of it but I did get a little bit and it was very informative. Learned a lot about leopard frog plecos and their habitat and how to breed them. So that was really cool. There were leopard frog plecos, but Kenny got to them, and they are way too expensive for me. But they are a beautiful pleco. So that's going to be it. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out. Not very long lives, and uh, and because of that, they also grow very fast. So it's a fast-growing pleco, and that comes into play when you're trying to stop her from breeding them because now the fry grows really fast. You don't have to wait for a year, year and a half. A lot of plecos they grow really slow. It takes at least a year to get them up to like inch and a half size. These guys, they're up there in six months. Water, she's a pump up. Hardness is really 
they come from the white, uh, sorry, they come from the clear water river, so it's not too, not too extreme. They can handle, they can handle a range of the uh, harvest. They're not too picky about it. And also these uh, L134 in the wild, it comes from modern flowing river. You can find them in that. You can find them in fast flowing river. They also find them in basically seal water over rocky bottom. So they're not too particular about the uh, the dog oxygen, like some of the other cycles that need to be living in the fast flowing river with the high oxygen to dog oxygen or they're not going to thrive. So this condition is not too complex demanding. And they uh, pretty much everything. On the war, on the war. They need to I'll talk about that a little later. Uh, they actually they actually switch the diet that they grow in. Uh, it's important to do that because uh, because uh, they kind of high him out. He was, he was dead. <laughs> Why he's got this little stress color here? Just because uh, he's like, I don't want to come out. He's stuff you know, he's cool me out of the cave. What you can tell from a male and female, from the female, is you can look at the body here. You've got these little, little dots of little bristles all the way in the whole body down to the top of the frontal here. The female is smooth. You can't really tell from the girth of the fish. This is female, you know, nice wide body. Male can be nice wide body too. But this here, the female will not have these bristles. I'll show you the, the, the video coming up today's slide. You can see how how bristle the, the, the body is inside. It's crazy. And these are obviously adults. Uh, they just had a special measurement here. About four inches. To uh, condition me triggering. So, as I mentioned before, the rainy season comes in and the water level changes by 30 feet. And when you get that much of influx of water coming through, you get you basically looking at changing the whole complete water gravity. You actually push the table down. they spawn, male is the one that takes care of uh, guarding the eggs. This particular spawn was just uh, last Sunday. This male was last Sunday. This uh, latest that spawn, spawn uh, was just last Sunday. If you look at the egg, you can tell it's fertile. I always check to make sure the eggs are fertilized. If you look at the eggs, you can see there's a separation, a little space separation from the yolk. And there's a little white patch starting to develop. That's where the embryo is starting to develop on. So it tells you that the eggs are fertilized. And, uh, and pay attention to the pattern of the fish. Notice the pattern here. Skinny line, broken line. Instead of more soft lines, it's a sort of a segmental line. Skinny line, more lines, basically, right? This is L134. Here's a video of it. You can see now you can actually see the bristles of it. These are the you can get agitated by me hitting a flashlight in there and it's gonna it's gonna do a little aggressive move. Coming up. Come on. There you go. You can see all that bristles on that. Next up, then you look at the pattern here, get your line, broken line. Here's another male. This male, has, uh, the eggs already hatch out. He's guarding a bunch of little uh, wigglers in that. And notice that thicker line, more continuous solid line all across. And again, you can see the male, the cover of the orthodontist bristles all over his body. Uh, at what point do you usually take the, uh, the baby and the parents? I usually wait till they actually almost uh, done with the uh, yolk bed. Uh, you notice the two different coloration set patterns of the fish, right? Mm -hmm. This one is from the original location that I mentioned on the real above. Mm -hmm. The other one with the skinny line, more broken line, that's from the second location from real Dementor. So two populations, slightly different patterns. Mm -hmm. That tells me that, yes, they are two 
isolated population, they are not commingled, yet they are all one person. The bristles, are they always present on males? Or they are males? always present on males. And it's just a stick. And, and they are hard too. They are not like a stock.